Hello and welcome to a new tutorial. In this one we'll be looking at creating toggleable lights. So as you can see we will go to here where we have two point lights on either side of this light switch. And when I press the light switch they turn off and when I press it again they turn back on. And we're also going to be looking at making these lights dynamic so that the lighting doesn't need to be rebuilt when they turn on and off. So as you can see from this light switch we link to an array of lights we want to turn on and off so we'll look at doing that as well. Okay so we're going to change it to this one. So we're going to be using a technique similar to basically what most of Unity is built around where we're going to be able to select the actors we want to turn on and off. So this is good for when you want to have switches for like doors and windows and things like that. So we're going to create a new blueprint class and we're going to name this light switch tutorial. And I'm going to open this up and I'm just going to add a cube which I'm going to scale down and in and we have a light switch. I'm going to make this the root and then over the top I want to add a box collision which we'll just use the box extent here to bring it out kind of move it to the front of the light switch bring it up so we can go like 80 50 50 with objects like this, you always want to have the trigger box. This is what we're going to be line tracing a hit to. You always want them bigger than the actual object themselves. You'll see in many little um, kind of beginners indie games, they'll have like the hit box like this big. So you have to aim directly on the object's origin to even get the ability to interact with them. Correctly sizing your collision boxes will make it so we don't have to do that and obviously in this we want a collision preset of just block all actually we're going to do to um, overlap all we can then select custom and we're going to block trace responses and just ignore the rest. And then on the cube, that's just set to block all. Okay. We want to add a new function named toggle lights. And I want to rename this. I'm just going to call it my box collision. And we want to add a new variable as well. And we're adding a new variable, not a local variable. So we're going to call this lights. Or you could do lights to turn off, toggleable lights, whatever you want to name it. I'm just going to name it lights because that's what it is. It's just going to be an array of type light and a reference. And we're going to select this little bit next to the variable type so we can create an array. Compile and save. And click the eye here to make it public and the reason we want to make it public is so that we now can bring this into the scene and you can see we have our net array elements here where we can now select some new lights okay so in toggle lights what we want is another variable named B lights on and that's our boolean and the default value of our boolean I want to reset that back to non array is true the lights are going to be on by default you can also set this to public if you want so that you can choose whether you want your lights on or off by default and then use a function to call that on the beginning but we're not going to do that for now we're going to leave them all on 
going to say hold B left click to get a branch and go OK is lights on so just dragging and clicking get if lights on is true then get my lights and coming from this we want four each so this is a for loop that goes around each of the elements in this array and loop body we want to say cast to no sorry in the loop body we want to set intensity and we're just going to set the intensity to zero and then we're going to set the lights is on to false now i'm just going to left click and drag over that control c control v paste it into the bottom so we get the same thing again and now we can turn the light on and give them an intensity of 5000 because that's the default lights intensity so we're just going to bring in our point lights so we can bring in a point light and i'll show you it works with other lights as well so we'll bring in a spotlight and I'm just going to turn the intensity of the directional light down. Okay, so now I've got two different lights. And now what we want to do is go to our first person character and we want to create a line trace. And I've done this in many videos in the past, so I'll quickly go over it. What you want is to on release, so just get like an E key or an input key or an uh, input event key. From released, you want to type line trace by channel. You want to get that and then get the world location of the first person camera and pl plug that into start. This is if you're using first person. Obviously, if you're using third person, you'd probably want to do it from the player or the camera. It depends how you want to control it. Next, to get the endpoint, we want the forward vector, so the way the camera is facing, multiplied by a float, so how long we want this trace to last. Remember that one unit is one centimeter, so 250 here means two and a half meters, and we add that to the world location, and that is the endpoint. Now, here, really, you want a return value. If the return value is true, then that means the line trace hit an object, and we want to break this out hit result. Cast our hit actor to light switch. So cast to light switch tut here. And as light switch tut, I want to toggle my lights. And now we've got it in the world, we need to just add our array elements. So I've got two lights here, so I'm adding two, and we're getting a reference to point light and spotlight. And we'll click play. So this is the one we just made, that was the old one, you can tell because there's a spotlight here. When I line trace in, I turn them both off, and I turn them on. Okay, now you can see when we turn them on, some lighting needs to be rebuilt. So if we turn them on to movable, this makes them fully dynamic. However, this has a performance impact. Because they're fully dynamic, none of the lighting and shadows they produce are baked. So it requires some expensive computation. But then when you need to, you turn them on and off, you don't need to rebake the lighting. However, you can have it so they're pre-baked, generally to stationary would do, so you can change things in-game. So it says here, like, you can change the colour and intensity of it in-game, it doesn't make too much. Movable lights tend to be lights you can be move, like, in-game, you move them like this, so like a flashlight. So stationary would do, but the dynamic lighting is there if you wanted. And that's how you make a light switch, and it's a great introduction to referencing actors in your scene by just using a drop down menu, kind of like how you can do in Unity, and that becomes a great feature for making games because you can do it for 
locks and doors, scripted events. You know, maybe you want your player to use a computer terminal that opens a door three rooms away. You know, you're not going to put them into the same kind of blueprint class and separate them. You're going to want it to just reference it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did. A dislike if you didn't. And subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you.